In this video, we'll review how the length of a vector is computed, and then we'll talk about unit vectors, which are vectors of length 1. Our first example is a vector a with two entries, so dimension 2. To find its length, which I'll write with double bars, although some people write length of a vector just with single bars, like absolute value. We take the square root of 2 squared plus 5 squared, which works out to the square root of 29. That makes sense, because if you draw the vector with its tail end at the origin and its terminal point at the point 2, 5, then Pythagorean theorem says 2 squared plus 5 squared gives us our length squared. If we want to find the length of this three-dimensional vector, this vector with three entries, then we use the three-dimensional version of the Pythagorean theorem. The length of b is going to be the square root of 2 squared plus negative 3 squared plus 4 squared. This works out, coincidentally, to also be the square root of 29. You can also think of this expression for length in terms of the distance formula. If I draw this vector with its tail end at the origin, and its tip at the point 2, negative 3, 4, then the length of the vector should be the distance between this point and that point. And by the distance formula, that's the square root of 2 minus 0 squared plus negative 3 minus 0 squared plus 4 minus 0 squared, exactly the same formula as we used here. In general, the length of a vector v with n entries, v1 through vn, is given by taking the square root of the sum of all those entries squared. Now it turns out that the length of a vector is closely related to its dot product with itself. Recall that when we compute v dotted with v, we just have each component squared all added up. Well, if we take the square root of both sides of this equation, we get the square root of v dot v is the square root of all these components added up. Well, that's just the same thing as the formula for the length of v. So we have that the length of v is the square root of v dotted with itself, or if you prefer, we could write that as the length of v squared is v dot v. This relationship will come in handy in the future. A unit vector is a vector of length 1. So let's check, for example, if this vector a is a unit vector. If we take its length, square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 2 squared, we get square root of 9, which is 3, which is definitely not 1. So the answer here is no. Sometimes it's convenient to take a vector that's not a unit vector and rescale it to be a unit vector. In other words, multiply it by a scalar, by a number, so that that product is a unit vector. So what number would I have to multiply a by to get a vector of length 1, given that its current length is 3? If you're saying multiply it by 1 third, you're exactly right. Multiplying by 1 third will shrink it by a factor of 3 and get that length of 3 down to a length of 1. Let's just check it with some arithmetic. 1 third times a is 1 third times each of these entries. And so the length of 1 third a will be the square root of 1 third squared plus 2 thirds squared plus 2 thirds squared which is the same thing as the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 2 squared over 3 squared, which works out to 1. And more generally, for any vector v that is not the zero vector, we can rescale it to be a unit vector by simply multiplying by 1 over its length. Suppose, for example, we want to rescale this vector b to be a unit vector. Well, the length of b is the square root of 7 squared plus 3 squared. That works out to the square root of 58. So our rescaled vector is going to be 1 over the square root of 58 times b, or in other words, 7 over the square root of 58, 3 over the square root of 58. And that's all for this video on unit vectors.